Check, check. No, Miss Butler. Miss oh. Butler. I'm on. Can I turn my you mean leave it on? What's that? Really? Can you read the Yes, and I will hand it to him. Yes. Do you have to? Um, okay. I mean, you have as much as I do. I'm proud of him. Very proud of him. Yeah. Yeah, it was dream come true for Luke. Sweet 16. We thought, we've talked about that for years and years. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did he bring his poster by any chance? They hire like crazy. She tried to get a job. No. They have some weird workers there. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I know Abercrombie hires. So you were hires, definitely like, behind drive. That was your friend. <laughs> I told Rucker he needs to be um, ready for the bullpen tonight in case I get up here and get the call. Grace is always looking for a part-time manager. Check on it. Did he go over the agenda with you Friday? Yes. That's why he was going Okay. Oh, let me ask you. Let me find out her name. You know. Uh oh. So I'll use yours when I need to know what the time is. Oh, that's not good. You know what teacher name? Sarah Hester. I, uh. I charge one every time. I don't know her either. She said, I'm currently a teacher in the Spencer County School District. Yeah. Yeah. She's right about the church. So it's nothing to do with this. But I'm thinking, I can't place her. I've never heard of this Hester. Do you like that better? That's why a lot of people have to do it. Who else is going to hold his charge? Yeah, because people, I have, and you know, they make it so you can't. I want to sit way down here. And so. It's got me good. So I don't really know anything. I've heard about it. I've heard people are going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Now, I believe it. I told my wife I'm asking people. Yeah, well, I told my wife I think I'm going to do this. But I don't think it's on the cover. Yeah, like, they'll have it in the music. Either order, so just take it off. It's like, wow. I got both sides of my mind. That's going to hurt. The biggest complaint I have. Have you been typing a pill for that? No, when my mom was alive, she used to take the lives. Well, and especially because I got it to Rogers and Laydown Scripture. And where I'll go between the Irish Center. I can't think of the name of it right now, but if you take one, take one, maybe two. 
All still covered in fabric. Okay. Okay. That's pretty neat to see. So the people doing the room, they cover everybody's car. No, I didn't see. That's pretty wild. I walked it like five thirty-five, but I thought I just pulled up and I said, "Is it right down here today?" He said they'd be down about six, so I guess they're finished. Uh, they're doing it today. Yeah. They're spraying the old cafeteria today. Yeah. So, what happens next? Yeah. I think they're hoping to finish that this week. Don't be nervous. And then move over okay. to EOC. We're all here to support you. Oh, wow. Uh, I like your jeans. We just believe they said we were taking a couple days. Um, yeah, we say black. I guess that's gonna happen. Guilty. Yeah. And, and it was literally glowing right. I'll this try. Way. I'm yeah. here for you. I had a few speckles on my truck, but they didn't. Get no issue. Oh, okay. Interesting. Oh, really? It's a what they get. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but how was the yeah. ACT? That could be dangerous, though. It was so, okay. I feel like I got done quicker on the computer than I thought. Like, I that's the fourth section, isn't it? So that's an act of endurance and it's a lot of reading. Yeah, we're ready. Are we all ready? Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. The time is now 6 p.m. And at this time, I'd like to call the order the March uh, 25th, 2024 regular monthly meeting. Statement of Board Mission. By working together, Spencer County School District will make a difference in the lives of all students. Vision Statement. Spencer County Schools will challenge and support all students to become highly effective individuals. This would be a good thing for students to read. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I'd like to welcome all the visitors. We have a big crowd here, and I can guess why. It's good to see you, but if anybody wants to address the board later on in the meeting, uh, please at Fill out the blue form that is uh, down the steps here and give it to either Michelle or me, and then you'll have an opportunity to speak. Okay, are there any changes that we need to make to the agenda? Yes, ma'am. There's one thing that needs to be changed in regards to executive session. Uh, the language on the agenda for the closed session needs to be modified. Uh, for the superintendent evaluation, the Open Meetings Act uh, subsection is KRS. 61.801K uh, for a meeting which state law requires to be conducted in privacy and KRS 156.5576C, which requires preliminary discussions relating to the evaluation of the superintendent to be conducted in closed session. It's a lot. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Are there any others? Okay, then uh, I, need a I need a motion to approve the uh, the corrected agenda. I'll make that motion to approve the corrected agenda. Lynn, do I have a second? Tim, all in favor? Unanimous. Okay, let's go on to recognitions. Dr. Foster. So we have two individuals. Miss Butler is going to join us at the podium, and I will meet the individuals over here at the fancy. Spencer County sign. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. 
Um, we are going to be recognizing two individuals tonight. First, we're going to recognize a student. His name is Joey Taylor from TES. He is the winner of the Kentucky Association of Health Plans Become a Vaccine Champion Elementary School Poster Contest. So, Joey, if you are here, can you come on up? Oh, he's coming in the door. Do you want me to go to the other one? We can come back to Joey. We should start clapping. Let's do, let's come back. Come back. Okay. So we also want to recognize uh, Miss Shannon Bynack. She is a teacher at TES, and she has um, renewed her um, national board certification. So um, she originally did it on um, ten years ago, and she just recertified this year. Big accomplishments. A lot of work. Congratulations, Mrs. Bynack. And we would also like to recognize okay, awesome. uh, Joey Tyler for the being the winner of the Kentucky Association of Health Plans Become a Vaccine Champion Elementary School Poster Contest. Congratulations. <laughs> We have no one that wants to speak, so let's move on to seven academic success and student achievement. All right. First up tonight, we have Mr. Phillips, Spencer County High School, with our academic spotlight this month. Thank you for having us. Um, first of all, I wasn't expecting such a large crowd either. There's quite a few people here, <laughs> so I don't know what's on the rest of the agenda, but it could be exciting. But um, Thank you for your time for us to get up. We always, this could be a nerve wracking time for people, but this is an exciting time for me to be able to show off our students and our staff. Um, if you can remember in years past, we've done, our culinary department has, has done some stuff for you all. Uh, Ms. Combs and our, our engineering department came in with some drones. And then uh, I think last year, last time we were together, um, our governor scholars, they came in and spoke to you about that upper that, that experience that they got to have. So uh, we want to take this time and, and kind of talk a little bit about something that we're kind of doing district wide. It's a, it's a district wide initiative, but it's really kind of focused at the high school because it's, we're basically converting our senior project over to profile of a learner. Um, a lot of districts are already doing profile of a learner. And this is something that we are tackling K through 12, basically pre K through 12. Uh, there's going to be defenses now at the fifth grade level and at the eighth grade level. Uh, all of our high schoolers are going to do it. I think starting next year, all the eighth graders and fifth graders will do it. I think they're piloting that this year. Um, but I, I just kind of wanted to introduce that to you all as, as board members, because I think it's really important that you see that, um, you know, we do. We, we to, In order to graduate, we have to check off the boxes, right? We have to, we have to show that we've mastered standards that the state requires of us. Uh, we have to check off the small things like a civics exam and some financial literacy standards. So there's some boxes we got to check. But I think this profile of a learner, once we get this thing built, um, it's going to allow us to put out extremely well-rounded kids that are ready to go out and be leaders in our community. And, and honestly, and worldwide, you know, we, we know how the world's come, becoming nowadays where um, you can make such an impact at such a large scale. So I wanted to take this time. I'm going to have I've got a couple of teachers and I've got three students, three seniors are going to come up and kind of share kind of what this experience has been, been like for them. And uh, I cannot thank Miss Cook enough for taking this on. So Miss Cook has always led our senior project. And if you're not familiar with our senior project, this is something where we have a defense day later on in the year. Kids would show up with a binder 
and they show that they did some mentoring and they show that they, you know, they've done these things and it's all kind of paper. We're transitioning that totally to an online kids are building websites. Um, really, really 21st. Like it's really cool stuff. It's really neat to see. Um, but that's been a shift for us, for Miss Cook. Miss Cook's always had that senior project and it's been a senior led thing. But now this is something when we get these middle schoolers next year as ninth graders, they're, they're already experiencing this. So they're going to walk into our doors and we're going to start this process the day they walk in the building. And it's just going to be a culminating project that they present to us at the end of their at their graduation. So we're really excited about where it's going. We feel like we're kind of building the plane in the air a little bit right now, if that makes sense. Um, I've told our seniors multiple times they're kind of our guinea pigs. They're, they're working these kinks out. But I wanted to allow uh, Miss Cook and Miss Shouse, if you all want to come on up, I'll let them start first. And they're going to kind of present what the, kind of how we tackled this as a school and, um, and kind of where it's headed in the future. <coughs> and we'll get our three students up. So. Ms. Cook, you all are all your own. Hey, good evening. I'm Mrs. Cook. Um, I think the first thing we'll talk about is just the senior sessions that we did. Um, basically, Ms. Shouse and myself and Ms. Herod are in a PLC together, and it's kind of non-traditional, but um, we decided to focus our PLCs on the profile of a learner really break apart what the kids are learning, what they're showcasing, how they're going to be assessed and that kind of stuff. With those conversations, we can't, and I don't even remember who came up with it, but we came up with the idea of senior sessions where we use advisory to um, rotate the kids. So like there's 10 senior advisors <clears throat> and each one of us took a different aspect. Some of them, like all the profile of a learner competencies were involved, but then there was like budgeting and we'll go through those in just a second, but each one of us had our own thing. So for 10 weeks, all I did was have a different group and I taught the same thing every time. So that allowed me to become an expert and work with the kids more effectively. I think Michelle would say the same thing. Um, so then at the end of that 10 weeks, each kid had been exposed to all five competencies. And so at that point, then it was time to start building their web pages. So we we sent the um, slides that we used to introduce the process to our kids. Um, but basically, this is just kind of what we did every Tuesday and Wednesday. We did six weeks, rotated <coughs> the kids. We can keep going. So. Maybe keep going. Sorry, this is literally what we used with the kids. So do you want to talk about? <laughs> sure. So the profile of the learner, as most of you know, have five different competencies. So there were five teachers that tackled each one of these. So you see at the top, Ms. Shouts, Ms. Cook, Ms. Sullivan, Ms. Roberts, and Ms. Harris. We were the five. I was an empowered learner. So I'm an expert on empowered learner. And um, so those were the five, those are the five competencies that the students need to have on their next slide. They need to have evidence that they've covered that, and then they need to give inflection and they need to tell you what it is. So and we're gonna have them show you. Um, these five competencies. Um, actually, I'm going to that. Avery, did you come up and Jack? Avery's going to, I don't can you pull her Avery website up? Avery's going to talk to you. She's going to show you the website that she's been working on. And they're really nervous because none of these are final. So um, <laughs> that's, that's uncomfortable for these guys. But we wanted to see, we, we wanted you all to see the process. Um, so Avery's going to kind of take you through her web page and all of the five competencies and what she's looking for those. Avery, what are your plans next year? Do you know yet? Um, I don't know yet. I'm going to attend college. I don't know which one yet. I'm deciding between University of Kentucky and Lipscomb in Tennessee. Interesting. So, one of those two. Uh, yeah, I'm Avery Earnshaw. I'm a senior at Spencer County High School, and this is my website so far. Um, we're on the homepage right now. All of the websites start with a homepage, which Brooklyn is going to go through a little bit more detail with after I talk, I guess. Um, but if you can scroll down a little bit, we have all implemented um, this four block row to show you the most like four kind of bulk pieces of our senior project. Uh, there's the community service mentoring, the job file and the research paper. Those are things we've been working on throughout the entire year that are really big parts of the senior project as a whole. So if you could click on that first one for me, please, uh, the community service, please. Um, if you click on the blue button, yeah. It'll take you to the um, the problem solver portion of my website. So the problem solver being one of the competencies. 
uh, the problem that I was solving for my community service project was called the prom pop-up. And I worked with the youth service center at the high school to get a bunch of uh, dresses and suits donated so that people wouldn't have to purchase them to go to prom because that's a big issue for a lot of people. Um, and we ended up having over like 75 dresses. So that was a really big accomplishment. And I was very happy with how it turned out. So, so far on our websites, we've been putting in pictures of everything. So then we can start with what we have and then write based off of that. Um, so this is my community service project so far. And then I'll add in some other uh, pictures in there too of other um, us problem solver aspects that we're getting to. <laughs> so traditionally before this year, that stuff would have lived in like a three ring binder. Yes, I so guess so. I don't, would you have pictures in the binder? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, now it's all online, which I think it's really great that we're learning how to do it online because so much of everything now is online and to carry around those big three ring binders also wears out our backpacks. So <laughs> I'm happy about it being on a website. Um, and then if you could click on maybe the active collaborator page, please. It's the very, the second one. Yes. Um, active collaborator is one of our other, um, competencies, which I guess you needed access to see my one file there, which is a good thing. We know that now. So I will fix that before I actually do my defenses. So thank you all for letting us present. Um, I have a picture on there that's me like collaborating with a bunch of different people. The senior sessions were really helpful to tell us some examples that we can use, like anytime you've collaborated with people, any extracurriculars, clubs, things that you've worked together on. If you scroll down even further, I have a couple um, of my, oh, sorry, you can't see them. Um, a couple <laughs> projects that I've done in school. One was a science project that we worked in groups with because uh, the teachers have also been informing us we want to have both real world, real world experience and school wide experience. So the school examples would be those projects that we've done. And AP language was one that we have on there. Um, and then that first example was just at a middle school conference that I was at this weekend. So that's more of a real world example that I'll write about when we continue that. Um, then for the effective communicator, if you could click on that one too, please. Um, that I'm really sorry that you all can't see these uh, documents. I was really hoping that wouldn't be up there. But um, that we learned in the senior sessions, it was important to include the effective communicator to show that you could both speak and write um, your communication effectively, as well as like online and written. So the first document that you can't see, that's our job file which was one of the tabs at the beginning. So that's our resume and our cover letter. Then below that was an example from another conference that I went through, through the Y Club. That was the Kentucky United Nations Assembly. Um, that was some hand stuff that I did with a physical booth that I got to talk to a bunch of people about Doctors Without Borders. And then below that was um, some Canva pages that I made. If you could scroll back up a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, was for that same conference that I used technology to communicate with people visually. Uh, so that's another example that I'll talk about in the defenses. And then uh, below that where you were before, those are some projects that I've done throughout the year with um, Y Club and the graphic design at the high school. So those are some more examples of communicating effectively. Then the last two are problem solver and engaged citizen. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Could you go to empowered learner, please? I already talked about problem solver. Empowered learner, um, our teachers are reminding us that mentoring is a really good one for that because we used our own time to go and find somebody to mentor us and then work with them on our own time to do that. I have 16 hours of mentoring and I worked with um, Vivid Impact in Jefferson Town. So that was really great that they let me come and work there. And then those are some from my mentoring. So if you could scroll down a little bit more, please. There's the different machines and things that I got to use. And that was with um, Mr. Dockery who let me go there. As well, I have another example. Um, if you continue to scroll down, I was part of the field trip that we got to do the SRO police car uh, with that Luke Earhart design. So that's another example that I have put up there. Um, then the last one is engaged citizen. And we learned in our senior sessions that the engaged citizen proves that you're engaged with your community and with the world in general, and that you're going to make a world better place because you're a citizen there. And we want to do that. We want to be productive members of society. So this is the voter registration fair that um, I helped put together with Y Club. Uh, that's me and one of our guest speakers from the government. And then the um, another um, communication that I put out was another Canva poster that I made. And I, I think there might be more on that slide. I've changed it so many times. Yeah, there's just another photo and stuff on there. And that is a... Um, 
piece, that writing is something that I wrote for a scholarship I was trying to get earlier this year. So I'm going to kind of use that base of the scholarship that I based off of the voter registration and tweak it a little bit so that it fits in my website. That's the majority of my website so far. Very nice. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And here's Brooklyn to tell you more. Hello, my name is Brooklyn Wright. I'm also a senior at Spencer County High School, and I'm kind of showing you guys more of the lessons that we did that weren't about the competencies. So we had a few that were uh, budgeting, how to use spreadsheets, and I'm talking more specifically about Canva. You won't get to see a whole lot of my web page, but you will see this front page that I created. Um, this is just my cover page. I'm going to the University of Southern Mississippi for marine biology. And so I wanted that to be my opening thing, the first thing that they see when they get on my web page. So Miss Alcorn um, at the high school, she taught all about Canva and how, it, how to use Canva to create cute little graphics for your websites. And so that's actually how I made the top with my name and all the pictures. So that was one thing that we got to use that they gave us. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, can you go back to the slides? And what she was talking about with Miss Alcorn, that was one of the sessions. We had one of the sessions on Canva. Um, and if you'll scroll to the next one, I think it just goes through. Yeah, so like there was a session on Canva, and then just go ahead and go to the next one. One on application and job skills one on budgeting, one on spreadsheets, one on web page development. Obviously, that was practical. I mean, then there was a study hall where they were supposed to use that time to work on the session, the, the learning that had taken place in the session. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the structure. I think there's one more slide about structure, though. Yeah, so this is just an example of what the actual schedule looked like. Just so you can see, two, two days a week, we just rotated again. I had the same kids. Or I had different kids every single time, but I was able to teach the same lesson. Can you do one more slide? Sure. So we sent out a survey um, just last week asking for feedback from the students on how they felt that the senior sessions went. And so um, you can see that 70% of the students found that the sessions were effective and very useful. 80% of the students felt like they are making progress on their web pages. And then we have some feedback for improvement. I'm going to let Jess Algar kind of talk to you a little bit about that as well, because she was one of the ones that wanted to share some feedback. Hi, I'm Jesse Algar. I'm a senior at the high school. Um, I do think that these sessions have been really helpful and beneficial for us to learn how to navigate like the internet and how to do how to like pre present ourselves and be able to showcase ourselves in a way that we you know look good to the community and we'll be ready to graduate and it'll also showcase all the things that we've accomplished and it's also good for us to see because we don't even realize all that we've accomplished so just to see it all laid out for us is really great but there were a few things that I think that we needed to improve on for next year I do think that we need to start sooner in the year, in the school year, because I think that there wasn't a whole lot of time for us to try to figure this out. And again, we are new to it, too. It was new to us, so we didn't really know what we were doing. So I think starting earlier in the year would help for them, for the incoming seniors to be able to navigate it a whole lot better and to understand what it exactly is they're being asked to do and being asked to present. And then when they're working on a specific competency like whatever competency they're working on for which we had a week to do whatever one they're doing for that week i think would be good to have longer so maybe like a week or like two weeks so they can get it all done and all completed in two weeks because right like this year we did it in a week and we had pictures and like a small reflection or like description of what we did but i think to be able to have time to write a reflection and then discuss what we did and how that 
like how it fit with that competency would really help. And then they would feel a lot more secure and they would be able to get feedback and then they would know that they had it done. They wouldn't be stressed about time. And then um, I think that there should be a session specific to public speaking because I think that that's really hard for people. And I think that like having one about like have, like there's tips and then just maybe like practice, maybe practicing presenting their web page would be really helpful and it'll make them more comfortable for when they go in to do their defenses. And then having a session on how to use Google Sites, because that, again, was new to us, didn't know what we were doing. And so I think that having one specifically just for Google Sites and how to add things and how to make it look really pretty and how to just make it the best that it can be would be really, really great and really helpful. Um, that's about all I have for improvements for next year because they've been really, really great. And I think they've been really helpful for us. And again, it's new, so we don't know what we're doing. But I think with those improvements, it'll help for next year for the incoming seniors. Good feedback. Thank, Thank you. you. So I am, I'm, I think it's really cool that we have so many people here, especially a lot of these younger kids here tonight, because I think people need to understand and people sometimes don't understand that the, the classroom today looks different than it did five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago when I was in school, things of that nature. So if listening to those three young about the future of the county, then you're probably in the wrong room because we are taking not only are they checking the boxes for the, the that they understand math and English and science and social studies and they have their electives. But, man, we're putting out productive young people that are ready to go tackle and they're confident and they are, they're ready to go do their thing. The fact that we got kids saying they're going to Southern Miss to do marine biology, I could not have done that at 18 years old. And, and, and that's the thing that she's going to, Brooklyn's going to walk down there and knock it out with, the, you know. So um, I think it's a K through 12 thing. It's, it's really exciting that we're tying this in at all levels. Uh, I know we have a team that are going to go over, I think, in a couple of weeks when the middle school, they, they're going to do their defenses. we got a team of teachers that are going to go over and just see what it's about. We want to see it. Uh, we're going to try to get to the elementary level when their days are set because we want to see it. We want to see what it's like because those are our kids coming to us. Um, but I think that, you know, us leading this and you all allowing us to kind of pursue this profile of a learner is just going to make us as a county. It, it's just taken from really good to great. I really believe that. And I'm excited where it's headed. Um, I don't know, you know, when we talk, this is academics for us right now. This is what it looks like. It's not just checking off, you know, doing, doing tests and things of that nature. It's different. We want our kids out of the building. We want them leading. We want them doing those things. Um, and I love where it's headed. So that advisory time that they speak of, that's been really critical for us. You know, and for you all that aren't, yeah, I think you are familiar with it, but we added that this year. That's a new thing for us. It's a 30 minute block every day. And it's allowing us to do things like grade checks and build with kids, but then it's allowing us to do this. So Miss Cook came to me back in the fall with a little bit out of the blue. She kind of, they kind of came up with it. I'm like, yeah, let's try it. Let's do it with our teachers. So, it, and it, oh, well, my junior advisory teachers came to me and said, Miss TT stuff with our juniors because it's such a big year. We want to use advisory for that. So now we've got our 10th grade teachers building like some state testing rotations and where they get to see. So it, it it's contagious, right? Like when, when you, when you tackle something like this and you see some success. So we're extremely excited. Um, our teachers are unbelievable. The, it's just extra work that they've taken on, but they want it to, they want it to, they know it means something to kids and um, we're excited where it's headed. They are a little bit of our guinea pigs. We love the student feedback. We know we have to get better and there's some areas we have to get better. But we kind of knew that, right? We, we understand that and we're open to that. So um, that's our academic spotlight, you know, for the, for the spring and, I'll take any questions that you might have. And I think I know Ms. Butler might be doing some profile of a learner stuff here in a little bit, I'm sure. So maybe we're a little segue for that. But we appreciate your time. These young ladies are amazing. They are leaders in our building. They're leaders in our community. So um, make sure you let them know that because they represent everybody extremely well in this room. So thank you for your time. Anybody have any questions or comments? Statement. Yeah. I want to thank Ms. Yes. Cook, Ms. Shouse, the yeah. three young ladies for being here and being brave enough to share your work. Uh, when I first met Miss Butler back in the summer, you know, we talked about the profile and where Spencer County was, and we knew that this year would be muddy, for lack of a better term, yep. um, getting getting defenses off the ground, uh, and especially at the high school, evolving from the senior project, what it's looked like, what it's been, 
and it's known. People knew what that expectation was. So that those rules kind of got thrown out the window and we started it anew and you guys uh, kind of proved that we're going to be all right for this next generation of students. And that means an awful lot. So thank you. I will tell you this. When I interview people, if they, if they say something like, if you just tell me what you want me to do, I'll do it. That's the kind of person I'm not interested in. I'm, I'm interested in the person that can't figure it out, yeah. which obviously you guys are proving that. That's kind of the way the real world is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Miss Cook realized the problem. She brought the solution. Right. That, that, that's a big thing that we ask. But. So thank you all for hanging um, yeah. in. Last thing I have is our defenses are April 30th. Uh, we have the extension office reserved. Um, I would love for you all to be a part of that, even if it's just for an hour to stop in and see. You know, we have 240 of these things that are being worked on right now. So if you, ha if you have the time on April 30th, it's an eight to four type deal. We run them in and out. It's a pretty chaotic experience, but I think it's well worth your time if, if you want to stop by. So if you have any questions, you know where I'm at. Feel free to call or email anytime. All right. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Thank you. As we know, our high school basketball team got to visit Rupp Arena last week in a couple, or I don't know how soon, but we also have a lot of our younger students about to go to Rupp Arena through a program called STLP. So Miss Emily Baldwin, our district ST, STLP um, lead, is going to walk us through some pretty cool spotlights tonight. So Miss Emily, the yeah. floor hi. is yours. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, like you said, I am the student technology leadership program lead for our district. It's my first year ever doing that, so I'm excited. And I think it's the first year we've ever had anything like that. So a big push this year for us to participate. Um, if you don't know what that means, STLP is um, the Student Technology Leadership Program. It provides a way for students to design, make, collaborate, and learn through the use of technology. So for our kids to see what the high school has done, is this was a great timing. Uh, both elementary school kids and middle school created projects or products to participate at the state level. Um, their products and projects demonstrated the process and learning through various STLP categories, such as Minecraft, digital products, coding, um, just a few to kind of give you an idea of what they've done. But they've already presented these projects back in December. Um, they had a kind of a small panel of judges through a Zoom call. Um, so they are ready to show you what they have done. They got invited to go to state, which is happening on Wednesday. We'll go to Rupp. So they're here to practice a little bit and to show off what they know. So um, Spencer County Elementary is going to go first and then PPS and then middle school has a video for you to watch. You guys ready? Hi. Are you going to be the brave? Hello, I'm, I'm Kinsey Forey with STLP. Our project is nice to meet you. Our project is about um, how, um, how teachers, kids, and families can get to know each other better. Our challenge that we have we're trying to address uh, a lot of new staff and old staff. Better introduce themselves to kids and staff doesn't have enough time in their day to really get get up with every kid and tell them about themselves. So. We picked this because it's fun to get to know new teachers and provide our school community <laughs> with a resource so they can get to know them, too. It helps everyone work together better. The technology we, we will use is computers, iPads, iPhones, QR codes, videos, Google Slides, YouTube, and email. Um, so this is what we hang out, hang up outside your door and students can come up, um, and scan the QR code and it will lead them to, <coughs> um, their video and, um, and then the, and then the video will tell them about themselves. Next slide, please. Next slide.
Um, that was one of our videos that we did, and I don't know who's next. So. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our presentation. Overall, did more people pick snow days or NTI days? Just check. <laughs> um, Brooke Klaus and Melissa Mallory are the coaches, and they did a phenomenal job. They meet once a week since August, so they've really? been very busy trying to get them ready. So they really did a great cool. job. Well done. All right, Miss Treva, and you're it's from TES. Official shirts. And these are our shirts. They're all going to wear them. All the schools are going to go. It passed. To ensure that our information is correct and accurate, we are only using verified websites or verified information that will be driven to our project, such as um, such as websites that end in .gov or .edu. We only use our ideas. The data collected will not be used to um, the data collect that we collected will be used to improve our project and our project. Up. The data collected will not be shared with anyone that is not involved in our data. Here are some members of the SCLP club. We have all created this slideshow together through Canva.com and Google Slides. Continuing credits with some of the images that the members have created for this slideshow. Next with others who strengthen our project, we had our school first play our first iteration of the game and then let them tell us where we were going and where we needed to grow by answering questions on the Google form. We reached out to the local recycling center for information regarding recycling. We hung flyers and posters with get our game's QR code in the community for our peers to play in QR codes asking them for feedback through a Google form. Here is the result of the Google form that the other students used to vote on for a game that decided to bring in a state competition. We use digital tools to communicate with others by creating posters and flyers that we hang around the community. These posters and flyers led to 
Act led to the community to our game in Google Form. We posted our flyers in the school's Facebook page and such as the school's website. We also emailed the link to the district so that all schools could be involved. As a team, we created video games to teach people the importance of recycling and to reduce the amount of trash that enters the landfills. The ways we have utilized technology in this project are the following. We use Canva for various parts of our project, like our posters, flyers, video game backgrounds, and characters, and other such graphics. Scratch was used to create our individual video games, or our first iteration, that were voted on as a school to determine the game that we would fully develop that you see here today. The Cricut was used to help make our trifold board display. Google Forms to make our Google Forms. QR Code Monkey to make our QR codes. TES Facebook page, email, and TES website to promote our game. Laptops to achieve all these things required for our game that required technology. <coughs> uh, we addressed and solved our project problems by having the students that are in school play our game and having them fill out a Google form. This allowed students to tell us what we could improve on or we could change about our game. We, we then used that feedback to improve the game and the user's experience. We also looked to each other to get a video. Just click the back arrow. Huh? Yep. Here's the tongue. To build our knowledge into regionals, we researched tutorials on Scratch, YouTube, and Google to help us learn the coding that we needed to successfully create our game. We worked together to share what knowledge we learned on our own with one another. We also implemented peer, feed peer feedback as a way to improve our gameplay, game content, and user experience. The impact of recycle time was measured by using QR codes and surveys on the Google Forms. This survey helped us gather the community's knowledge of recycling and if our game had an impact <coughs> on, the, on that knowledge. The, pur the uh, proposed was to teach all ages about the importance of recycling so that the world can become cleaner and healthier for generations to come. Our club members participated in making decisions about the project by doing a democracy-style voting session to include every everyone's opinion, and that way, everyone had a say in what happened with the project. We also had meetings every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to share our ideas with each other and work as partners in small groups to complete tasks for our project. We used our voting system with our school peers to gain feedback from students at our school that helped us to further our project development. Uh, here are the questions that we asked on the Google form and this is what the community is saying. Would you like to see our community's results? Yes. 
Yes. Trashy production is trying to teach people to recycle because we don't want so much stuff in the landfills. This will help save our planet for future generations to come, leaving the earth a better place than where we started. We have we worked really hard on this project so far and plan to continue to improve by adding more levels and making the store in the game work pro properly. We want to add more storyline to be able to incorporate more information about recyclables, improve our graphics, user experience, general gameplay. We would love to be able to make our game mobile friendly to be able to include all game players. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Did did uh, you students help with the uh, the charts and the graphs do, General, but you help by getting the information and putting it in. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, would you like to see our game? Yes. Yes, we okay. would. So you can click on yeah. Gonna bring you to our game, and you know, just click on screen. You guys did this with Cody. Yes. You wrote this. Yes. Very cool. So we shall have to play it. <laughs> Come on, <Ms>. Marla. It's <laughs> 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 Go, oh, Michelle. <laughs> if you hold down the arrow, it'll make you move faster. If you hold down the arrow, it'll make the guy move faster. Let's let an expert play. Aiden's gonna play. There we go. Yeah. What's going on? Fast. It's like a hundred. Okay. That's right. But yeah, that's gotcha. Oh, yep. So 
Oh, and good shit. And good shit. Bro. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's so Thank you. Very well done. Thank guys. you, guys. That was great. <laughs> we wish you guys the best next week or Wednesday, not next week. This Wednesday. Week. Yep. Okay. And the last thing we have is the middle school. Um, a handful made it to state with their products. So they made a video because a lot are in sports right now. So uh, enjoy the video, Miss Gabriel. She's the coach and she was phenomenal. Hi, so. Program coordinator for Spencer County Middle School. Thank you for the time you have given us tonight to showcase our STLP team and what they have done throughout the school year. Many of my team members could not be here tonight for various reasons. <coughs> I have to put together a little video to show you what they have to say about STLP. Hello, I'm Ava Farr. I just made for sure that the uh, Student Technology Leadership Program has definitely made me a better digital student. I still think it's one of the other people that are citizens. I push for you to explore the technology. I'm a young person. The reason why I was able to be 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 I did a SLP in November of 2023. Through that time, I've my art so much, it was crazy. Now I started a competition, I was for redrawing a book on this for digital art. That contest was first the art that I did for SLP that I finished. That art ended up getting state finals. Since then, I've been heavily motivated to improve. My goal for the year was to learn a lot of the and be able to draw faces after me. Although I haven't mastered my faces, I believe I'm a new My name is Father Holsey, and I have a final for SLP. I've done SLP and it's not worked out so long to sleep and appreciate it. I want to go on to the first of the country, which is a digital illustration and fall in favor of the digital photographies. I want to make my work look special and dramatic. I try to show the real work in my work and to get people to see how I always do a new moment. I really love my work and I hope you can see it. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to get to the
participate in competition. Scissor Bot challenges allow me to design, build, and program a The last few I want to highlight is the Hunter County Middle School Cinemania Film The Cinemania competition is unique because it allows for students to write scripts, film, and edit their videos for the competition. A unique characteristic of this competition is that students receive their list of elements 48 hours before the film is due to be submitted. Here is a list of the 2024 surprise elements. <coughs> As you can see, the list of reviews include in their videos is quite random. Here is the video that our students came up with for their submission to the 2024 Cinemania competition. So we do have a few participants from the middle school here tonight, correct? Is there anybody here? Okay. Awesome. We appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Baldwin, anything else? <coughs> Thank you guys for sharing. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Students and parents, this is the time to like 
escape if you want to. You're welcome to stay for the whole meeting, uh, but this is the perfect time. Um, and with that, we'll call up Miss Butler, who has our academic report. to we'll talk about profile of a learner. I have imagined, I have a suspicion some of your thunder's been stolen. It's fine. Get to follow the kids. I get to talk less now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Good evening once again. I will be quick and brief. I just wanted to give you guys kind of an update where we are in our profile of a learner that I um, have presented to you guys a few times. Um, as Mr. Phillips said in his presentation um, that Ms. Cook and the seniors did a great job on, we are starting defenses soon. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, so early on, we wanted to make sure that all students in Spencer County Schools have access and the opportunity to, to learn the profile of learner competencies and then have a pilot year of defenses at fifth grade, eighth grade, and 12th grade. So um, I just wanted to kind of show you that I've been asking teachers all year long to kind of give pictures of different projects or different things that they had students doing. Um, that kind of encompass and that they talk to uh, their students about. So you have a couple pictures here of each of the schools um, being engaged citizens. Um, TES had touch a truck, so they had a bunch of different community members around. Kids got to go around here. This was um, the Army Corps of Engineers had their park ranger thing out there. He had his whole get up on. Um, you see our boys basketball team at the nursing home before they uh, went to RUP. Um, SCS did... Um, something with the local animal shelter, and then you have our grizzly heroes um, that get that honor by showing um, that they are engaged citizen within their school. So I'm not going to go through all the pictures and kind of tell you what they are, but I just wanted to give you a good tidbit of this is not just something that the seniors are doing or that the eighth graders are doing or that the fifth graders are doing. We are doing it um, pre-K through 12. Um, <coughs> all of the competencies, not just you know, learning about and getting ready for our defenses, um, but just an everyday learning. These are effective communicators. Um, this guy, um, I don't think my thing's going to work, um, but you have Bob Ross over there. He's making happy little trees at the Wax Museum last week. That was really sweet. It was really good. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, just some really cool, uh, the district-wide chorus concert, which I think is super cool. It's such a great way that um, parents and community members and students can get together and do something like that together. It's just one of the coolest things we do, I think. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that's there. And then, um, so why, I think a lot of people in the beginning are like, why are we defending our learning? If we're learning these things, why have students defended, especially at fifth grade, um, eighth grade and before their senior year? And I was going to try and break this down, but I just think it's really important that all these things are there. So I'm going to just kind of read to everybody. So students defending their learning fosters critical thinking and deep understanding as they articulate and justify their ideas. It enhances communication skills through verbal and written expression. This process encourages self-assessment and reflection, preparing students for real world scenarios where defending ideas is crucial. It boosts confidence and motivation by actively engaging students in their learning journey, which is what we want for all of our students. So um, as mentioned bef uh, before, uh, by the high school, they are doing theirs all day long on April 30th. Um, SCS is going to be doing theirs April 26th. Uh, TES is going to do theirs May 9th and 10th. The middle schools is doing theirs April 11th. Um, so you'll start seeing things kind of the ones that are asking for community help. I know the high school is for sure. I think TES is. The middle school just sent this out. Um, it just had a nice QR code. So I wanted to make sure you guys had it if you want to sign up for one of those um, time slots to be involved there. A lot of exciting things happening in Spencer County and around um, the profile. I'll tell you just what I told all those teachers. It's nothing that it's nothing new. All these things we've done forever. We're just kind of giving these competencies stuff that we're doing anyway to make, um, you know, informed citizens of our future. 
to kind of do all these things. So any questions? Questions at all? Awesome. Okay, thank you all. Thank, thank you, Ms. Butler. Okay. I guess we're ready for the Super Duty Report. Yes, uh, so this month, uh, start off with some dates and reminders. Obviously, four-day week for students and staff this week. This Friday is a records day. Uh, next week, I'm sure, does not need to be reminded, uh, is spring break here in Spencer County. And then the 8th will be a professional development day. So staff will be in the building. Uh, students will not. A uh, reminder to each of you guys that we will ha not have a board work session in the month of April, just a regular meeting on April 22nd. And then May 17th, as it stands, knock on wood, is the last day uh, for students in Spencer County. Um, I shared last month that we hope to get graduation uh, date, time, and location, which is on tonight's agenda. I won't share that out loud until we vote on it publicly, but uh, hopefully Mr. Phillips and the folks answering the phone at the high school uh, we'll have some information to pass along here uh, by the end of tonight's meeting. Um, some information that I share each month, principals meeting agenda, uh, program directors, we have combined those for March and April to lighten the load of folks and get them out of their building uh, one less time each month. Um, and then out of district travel for me has picked up in the last month, but it slows down uh, after this. So I'm very grateful for that. So I've been at the uh, OVIC Board of Directors had onboarding in early March, onboarding last week. Uh, and then you see in number six, what is left for me, I'm towards the finish line. So we have a one hour uh, virtual session in April. Uh, my capstone presentation to you guys, the board, uh, Dr. Carter and Ms. Mitchell will be back here on June 3rd. Um, my final in-person session is June 11th and 12th. And then we graduate on July 24th. I'm not sad about that. Uh, last but not least is ILP artifacts for the month. We are on the final standard, which is standard seventh, which is influential leadership. Uh, you can see if you turn the page, uh, a number of items of evidence of implementation. I'll be walking you guys through some uh, specific things here when we go to executive session that I've been have been collecting uh, throughout the course of the school year. So that's it, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Dr. Foster? Okay, let's move on to actual discussion, our board minutes. And what is the superintendent's recommendation? Uh, approve the minutes as presented. Do I have a motion as stated? I'll do it. Aaron, do I have a second? Pam, all in favor? Unanimous? Okay, let's move on to B, child care, care rates for 24-25 and renaming the program. Yes, uh, Mr. Russell, anything to add to these and unveil the new title? Come on up. <laughs> so, child care rates annual, annual approval here. Um, the bottom line with this is it's a $10 increase across the board. Um, the biggest thing that I know the board has always wanted us to do is make sure that we are the most cost-effective child care in the county, which we are. Um, we double checked on that. And then also with that, the district employees do get a $30 discount per week. The second page of that is um, just some information. Um, our hours of operations, the holidays that we will be closed on. And then we have the past year, we've been having a revamping and what we call rebranding of the program. Um, we had a new director come in in April of last year and Basically, I, there was a lot of things that I wanted to change, but I had her come in and, and I just said, hey, as we go through the year, um, I want you to come to me. Let me know what you think. And so on a lot of things, we agreed. Um, we've redone our whole registration process for um, students, made it a lot easier for parents. We've gone to an all online payment um, for parents who've taken out the cash and the checks. That was always a pain. So it's all online now. Um, parents go through an app called Bright Wheels, which allows them to see their balance at all times. Um, they are able to check in and check out their kids through that app as well with the QR code when they come into the building. <clears throat> Our employees talk in and out with, with that same app. And then all communication is housed in there also. Um, so I think that we've made a lot of positive changes. And I think in with the, the ch positive changes that we've made, the biggest change is that we want to change names. And one of the reasons we want to do that is we want to take the negative 
perception of fair care that kind of is it out in our community and with all the changes we made in the last year um, the name that we chose was Tiger Cub Village um, and basically that is because we take kids from pre-k to fifth grade Taylorsville Tigers Spencer County Elementary Cubs and then obviously the early learning center are the Tiger Cubs. So, anybody have any questions? Go ahead. A graphic for it? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. We need this approval. And then Wait until it's graphic. approved. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay. Okay. We have a recommendation, Dr. Foster. Approve the proposed 2425 child care rates and renaming to the Tiger Club Cub Village at the ELC as presented. Okay. Do I have a motion as presented? I'll make that motion. Lynn, do I have a second? second? Pam, any comments or questions? All in favor? Unanimous? Lynn, like that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to C. Spencer County Early Learning Center partial interior renovation. Uh, Mr. Rucker would join us at the podium. We have talked about these, but just have Mr. Rucker join us if there's any questions. Um, Essentially, these are some of the BG twos and threes that need to be done. Mr. Rucker, if you'll give us the highlights of that. So we've been through the BG one process and then the BG one process for kind of a refining of that. BG twos. Now we've moved on to design schematics. That means that that will get those bids ready to go out and be able to go out for our lighting, HVAC, uh, life safety system bids for that particular place. And then the BG three is what we will fill out at the end once we have the bids from the BG two but we need to authorize both of those this evening to get those out on the street. Do you have any questions or comments? Do I have a recommendation, Dr. Foster? This one's a mouthful. Approve the schematic design and design development documents for the Spencer County Early Learning Center partial interior renovation project, BG number 24-159, and approve the BG2 and BG3 for the Spencer County Early Learning Center partial renovation project, BG number 24-159, as presented. Do I have a motion that's stated? Aaron, do I have a second? Second. Oh, oh sorry, Kim. <laughs> I hear. Uh, Lynn, all in favor? Unanimous? Okay, let's move on to D. Spencer County Elementary School Parent and Community Volunteer Coordinator Cafeteria Model. Yeah, so this is not a new ask. Uh, each year, Spencer County Elementary School hires this position through site based funds this position serves as both their parent and community volunteer coordinator as well as their cafeteria monitor any discussion dr foster we have a recommendation recommend the spencer county elementary school parent and community volunteer coordinator slash cafeteria monitor position pending sbdm approval do i have a motion as stated tim do i have a second aaron all in favor? Unanimous. Let's move on to E, Spencer County Elementary School, purchase Character Strong. Spencer County Elementary School is seeking approval to purchase the purposeful people impact package uh, with the gym from Character Strong. This is a comprehensive social emotional learning curriculum. The total amount is $8,295. Funds will come from the Spencer County Elementary School Fall Festival proceeds. After purchasing the program, the district can invoice OVEC for 74% of the cost. Ooh, nice. It is nice. Yes. Any questions or comments about it? How did you come up with this particular program? And that'd be great. I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. Just curious. curious. Um, actually, I have papers for you all too. Good deal. that we got this year through OVEC, Miss Ashley Summers. Um, she actually, that's why we're getting reimbursement from OVEC is kind of, it's part of her grant coming to us as well. So I actually got to go to a training with both of our counselors um, down in Nashville for Character Strong. Um, and it was an amazing training, probably one of the best that I've ever been to. Um, and we just felt like this purposeful people meshed really well with our vision and mission for Spencer County Elementary. 
Um, so what I gave you all was just like a family letter, the three things that they believe in. It's be kind, be strong, and be well. And to teach those three things, they go through different character traits. Um, so every month there will be a specific character trait that our counselors will kind of share out with our school. They will have a calendar with like a morning meeting message where they can play games, um, just pretty much becoming a good person and teaching kids how to do that. Um, so if you see at the very bottom, it's to teach students how to build strong friendships, to work together to solve problems, big and small, to grow skills for life and to become purposeful people. So I feel like this also goes along with our profile of a learner that we're doing. So it all just meshes really well together. So we're really excited. We're also going to be purchasing the tier two intervention um, because whenever we're looking at our MTSS at our school, we need those interventions for kids that are having difficulty, especially behavior wise. Um, so we're very excited about it. Any, Any other more, questions? Any more discussion? I think it uh, fits well with our holistic approach to education. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is, awesome. I, I, I Is this something that just the middle school, I mean, just the uh, Spencer County Elementary, I mean, is Taylorsville then the same thing? Or I guess I'm confused on why we are doing separate when we're trying to get district wide. Sure. Um, I mean, it's something we could obviously um, expose Taylorsville to if, if they're willing. Uh, but but no, it's not something that would be district wide. It would be specific to Spencer County Elementary at this point. And yeah, so the reason, yeah, the reason that we're even kind of looking at the program up until this point, we have always used a free social, emotional, any type of um, program like this. So the fact that we're getting 74% funding is amazing. Um, so we're really excited and it is through the grant that we have through OVEC is kind of why, you know, we're getting this opportunity based on, you know, how many kiddos we have at our school. It could be a pilot. Right, absolutely. And I mean, I would love to share it with them if they're interested, but. So it would probably mesh well as they move on to middle school. And it's an SBVM decision. Yes, that's correct. To incorporate this as. You have your there, so I can see. Mm -hmm. right. right. And so, like I said, I got to go to the training. I feel like this kind of goes along with, you know, our mission and vision, but also I think all of these character traits that we can teach to students goes along well with, you know, profile of a learner. So, yeah. thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, do we uh, have a recommendation? Yes, ma'am. Approved. Spencer County Elementary School's purchase of Purposeful People Impact Package with the gym from Character Strong. Note that the project will be funded by the Spencer County Elementary School PTA and OVEC. Do I have a motion to stay? I'll make that motion to stay. Lynn, do I have a second? Pam, all in favor? Unanimous? We'll move on to F, graduation date and location. Trying to help Mr. Phillips out here. Happy to share. We have an option for graduation, which would be Thursday, March 23rd, 2024 at 6 o'clock, Broadbent Arena. Let me first explain um, why it's not Saturday. Uh, we get out of school on Friday, February 17th. Leading up to that weekend, through that weekend, is the PGA Tour event out of Valhalla. All of the fair and exposition facilities will be parking and shuttle bus. So there is no graduations that weekend. So we had to wait until the following week. So uh, it'll be okay. It'll be great. The weather will be nice. And we'll celebrate the class of 2024. Okay, any comments or questions? Okay, do we? I guess we have a recommendation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do I have a, a motion as stated by Dr. Cross? I'll do it. Aaron? Do I have a second? Second. Lynn? All in favor? All in favor? Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Animals. Okay. Let's move on to the cooling circulation tower. G. Mr. Prather is here if you have any questions, but uh, Mr. Prather, you want to give us the layman's term 
of what's going on with the cooling tower and what's needed there, sir. So there's two circulation motors on this, this cooling tire. Uh, this device is a frequency drive that revs it up, revs it down according to the load on it. Uh, one of those are bad. So right now we, we're running with one pump. It goes down and we close the door. Yeah. And this is, is this the part that's in addition to what we approved last month, or is this the next agenda item? This is it? And, nope. and no, this is a separate problem. Okay. This is one we found trying to mitigate the other problem. I think this will resolve the issues? I, we won't know until we get that, but I, I, I wouldn't think so. I don't believe they're connected, uh, but it is a part that we found that yeah, it failed. Okay. We'll find out next month or whenever you get it in. In about six to eight weeks when the part comes in. A couple months, okay. Any, Thank you, sir. Any more questions or comments? We have a recommendation, Dr. Foster. Approve the cost of the Spencer County High School cooling tower circulation pump at a cost of $9,614.48. Funds to replace the pump will come from general fund contingency. Do I have a motion? Okay. Aaron? Do I have a second? Tim? All in favor? Unanimous? Okay, let's move on to H, Spencer County High School football field maintenance slash repair. The playing service at the high school was renovated back when the athletic facility occurred. Uh, in the background summary, you have kind of a broken down uh, synopsis of what is needed at the field. Basically, the middle of the field or the crown, as it's called, uh, has gotten a lot of wear and tears for about four years. So it's it's needing some um, some dirt, uh, Bermuda seed and topsoil on the soccer field as well adds up to about sixteen thousand um, dollars. So, again, it's not been really touched outside of just the basic weed control and mowing. Uh, since the facility was redone. So something with a natural surface uh, that comes along every few years. Is this a bid process that, that, that occurs for this type of work or is? Are these the people that are doing it? They are Do we ever try to source locally to, to do this type of work, or is it better to have do it with, go with a company that knows what they're that does it from start to finish? I think either option is personnel. Maybe that service is better to have somebody that has the expertise that they have. Right. So whoever does it, he makes sure they do it. Yeah, I see. I just know a lot of people that, that do this type of work locally. We have and a it lot was, of people who force them to work locally, but then they're taking the entire project. Really, the Bermuda grass is the part that once you get into sports turf, there's a lot of people that will do soil, there's a lot of people that will do laser level, but when you get to the Bermuda surface, and, they, that, and you can't separate that. You do this, you do this, and you do the Bermuda grass. Correct. You can't do that. Well, I guess you could. It would just have to be bid that way. I see. It's all itself is actually in public public. Oh, good. Oh, that's really what, yeah. And the dozer work that goes along with that, or? Okay. But the soil is coming <laughs> from here. <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We have a recommendation, Dr. Foster. Yes, ma'am. Approve the cost of the maintenance and repairs to the soccer slide football field at Spencer County High School. The cost of this work would come from general fund contingency. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't oh, have no, one go question. Ahead. Go right because ahead. Because I, I sort of heard that this might be a recurring thing. And, and is this something worth, like, budgeting in the future as yes. part of the budget? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. And I would add another far more expensive caveat. Um, 
I think it's also worth when we renovate the high school to look at turf. I'll make that That's motion. A whole <laughs> Sorry to muddy the water, Mr. Tripp. <laughs> It, it, at the end of the day, when you have a high school that's growing, like Spencer County High School is growing, and the amount of activities that we have, you know, it's one of those things you have to look at over time of what you have to put into it to keep it going. Um, you know, the field just gets a lot of wear and tear. Um, you know, and to be honest, the fact that we've made it four years and not had to do this was we're pretty lucky. So, it's you know, just, at, the, at the meeting, there's turf vendors, and yes. they always are, are wondering why we haven't, you know, pursued that option. And I had to blame, I, this year I had to blame it on that's the record. <laughs> that's a good person to blame. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I think when we talk about a high school renovation, I think it's something we definitely need to consider at that time. For, for, multiple, for multiple reasons. It just gives us a true all-purpose surface that wouldn't require this. You know, there, like right now, it scares me to death. If we were to have it, Bermuda starts to grow, and we were to have a late hard freeze, we could theoretically lose our surface. You know, those are things that just the risk you serve in this climate and the surface that we have. There's always things that come up. Well, and ho hopefully in that amount of time, we'll have better medical evidence around the impact on the athletes' bodies as many NFL teams are considering reverting back from turf to yes. natural grass because of injuries. You are correct. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens consider. there. <laughs> and we have a recommendation. Do we have a motion? I'll make it. <laughs> Sorry. It's That's fine. Right no, it's fine. <laughs> That's why we're here, Tim. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Aaron? Yep. All in favor? Unanimous? Okay, let's move on to I, Spitzer County High School Title I intervention, I a position using Title I. Spitzer County High School is assessing how it works through response to intervention in the regular schedule. They would like to allocate a portion of the remaining Title I funds to an instructional assistant position to serve students in that capacity. These funds are available in this year's Title I budget. If this position is successful in the coming months, it will likely be continued into the new academic year. Mr. Phillips here, if you have any other questions. Questions, discussion, or comments? We we have a recommendation. We do approve the instructional assistant position for Spencer County High School to support intervention with students. Funding for the position will come from the school's Title I allocation and will have no impact on the general fund. We have a motion as stated. Pam? No. Do we have a second? I'll second. Tim? All in favor? Unanimous? I know that people sitting out there will if they know their Roberts Rules of Order will say, how come we don't have the discussion after the motion and in between? But a, a previous board found that it was more comfortable for them to have the discussion first. So if this board ever wants to change that, please let me know and we can do that. Just a thought. Uh, we're ready for a consent agenda here. And everyone's had a chance to look at it. And uh, is there a motion to approve uh, action by consent items as presented here? I'll make that motion that was presented. Lynn, do I have a second? I did. Aaron, all in favor? Unanimous? Let's move on to communications. So board members, do you have any communication for us? And that includes Emma. <laughs> Maybe we need a special spot for... <laughs> Does Emma have any? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Moving on to uh, SCEA still, still is not in, in attendance. Um, no, they they have not been for quite a while. No, they haven't. I don't know. They've been here since I've been here. Yes, yeah, they used to be here every time, and we might uh, written communication. No conversation there. Okay, let's move on to dialogue and future agenda agenda topics. So we don't have anything. It'll be a month before next meeting, I think. Right? Yes. That's correct. That's no, a work long time. no work that session in April. Time. Used to seeing you guys more often than that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to 12. Uh, need a motion to make agenda the part of the official board minutes for March 25th, 2024. Pam, do I have a second? Second. 
Lynn, all in favor? Unanimous? Okay, let's move on to executive session. I'm not sure if I have the correct way, if you'd like to. You mean read it from the Yeah, book. just to make sure that we get it correct for the record, please. For a meeting which state law requires to be conducted, uh, superintendent evaluation for the open meetings act subsection is KRS 618101K for a meeting which state law requires to be conducted in private and KRS 156.5576C, which requires preliminary discussions related to the evaluation of the superintendent to be conducted in closed session. And there's also a caveat about property. So we corrected that part. Okay. Um, so now it's the part of the regular agenda. It's a, uh, yes, for uh, KRS 61.81. Oh, that's uh, that one. Uh, yes, I guess so. uh, it's 61.810 section 1B. And uh, that is for purpose of deliberation on the future acquisition or sale of real property by a public agency. I believe that's all. In the second it. sentence is what I You read. already did that. Thank yeah. you very much. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Lynn? Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Pam? All in favor? Unanimous?
Second. Tim, all in favor? Unanimous. Um, there, uh, there's no action was taken in our executive session. There's no action to be taken now. So we'll move on to adjourning the meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? At what time is it? Oh, that's a good Eight forty-six. Goodbye. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> Second. Second. Pam. All in favor? Unanimous and good night. All right. Good. Finally. <laughs> 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 <laughs>